Um, mycoplasma are still a big problem in agriculture. Uh, the vaccines that we have uh, until now are not very efficient. And so people rely on, uh, on antibiotics and we all know that uh, we are facing a huge problem with antibiotics due to the increasing resistance to these uh, drugs in fact. So the idea of my Cosimba project is to have a known and minimal chassis to be able to rationally engineer this in a predictable manner. Unfortunately, what we find in nature is more complex than what we need or we expect for a chassis. So we have these complex structures that we would like to reduce to the minimal component. Mycoplasma uh, is one of the smallest free-living cells that it is possible to divide uh, independently. I truly believe that these mycoplasmas they are tiny organisms, they will probably be the first cells that we truly understand and can completely model on a computer. Modern animal production was made possible through huge use of antibiotics. Now we come to an era, era where people see no, that's not the way forward, but we still need animal production. So this is a way to be able to produce animals and, and find ways to prevent diseases rather than treat them with antibiotics. Mycoplasma are the smallest and simplest self-replicating bacteria. Unlike all other bacteria, the mycoplasmas have no cell walls. They cause infections that are persistent, frequently difficult to detect and diagnose, and difficult to cure. Mycoplasma is a very unusual disease. Mycoplasmas are very, very tiny cells, so they are not easy to kill with standard chemicals such as antibiotics. So one of the only ways you can fight them is with things such as vaccines, but even vaccines are very hard to develop. Hard, but not impossible. In Barcelona, at the Center for Genomic Regulation, Professor Luis Serrano already had experience with mycoplasma bacteria. Some time ago, we, we were working on this little bacteria called Mycoplasma pneumoniae, that is a, lung, a bacteria you find in the lung of humans, and we wanted to use it as a model to understand life, no? because it was very small, you could grow in the lab, and we thought that it would be a beautiful system to understand how a cell works. When he heard of infections caused by mycoplasma in cattle and poultry, he had an idea. So I thought, why not use the mycoplasma that we have characterized, that grows well in the lab, that we have all the tools to express on the surface the antigens of other mycoplasma species, so we could, with one shot, vaccinate against many different mycoplasma species. No? Together with renowned European scientists, the MycoSynvec project was started. Funded by the European Union, it uses cutting-edge synthetic biology methods in an attempt to engineer a synthetic vaccine against mycoplasma and eventually curb losses in European agriculture. The aim of the project is to create a platform, a synthetic and non-pathogenic mycoplasma that can carry antigens from several strains, therefore building a one-in-all vaccine against mycoplasmic infections, an engineering approach that makes it necessary to reduce the chaotic complexity we find in naturally evolved organisms. So it's very important to have this understanding, this knowing what is doing every piece of the puzzle to do properly the assembly and the reconstruction of these minimal chassis. We need to know what are doing the different pieces because depending on how we remove them and if we remove too much, maybe what can happen is that then all the system breaks. Once a minimal organism is understood and created, the universal language of DNA makes it possible to do the genome editing in a different host organism that is much better known and easier to handle than mycoplasma. We are in the city of Bordeaux at the Institut National de Recherche Agronomique. In his laboratory, Jonathan Arfi, assistant professor at the Institute, is working on ways to modify the genome of the mycoplasma bacterium. 
we want to disguise mycoplasma pneumoniae so that it looks like other mycoplasma so that basically the immune system can train on that disguise uh, mycoplasma and the next time it sees the real mycoplasma mycoplasma bovis for instance it can say I have seen these antigens already I know how to fight them to make up the disguise, Arfi has to modify the genome of the chassis and add those genes that express the antigens on the surface. To modify the genome, he switches to a different host organism well known in science, the yeast. The first step is to extract the genome from mycoplasma pneumonia. We want to take it out of the cell. So we have our genome and we still have our dangerous genes for the toxins and we still have our antigen here. Because in mycoplasma pneumonia we don't have a lot of tools to produce that modified genome, what we do is that we give it to a yeast. Inside the yeast we have a lot of good tools that allow us to modify this genome. So using the yeast we are able to remove these bad genes and we are able to insert the one we want to keep. So basically the yeast is going to build for us, using our guidance, a new genome that we call the synthetic genomes, that basically only has the good parts that we want for our vaccine. And now this new genome, we take it out of the yeast and we are going to put back that genome into mycoplasma. The modified genome is put back in the original mycoplasma cell where it starts producing the desired antigens. Only then the immune system can recognize it as a threat and start building antibodies. You no longer have the toxins because you have removed them from the genomes and now you have, you have your synthetic vaccine strain. And this one is the one we want to keep. But there is still a risk. Vaccination with living organisms still includes a tiny chance to trigger an infection. Scientists at the Imperial College in London are developing a set of safety measures to eliminate any potential risk in the new synthetic vaccine. So the ideal vaccine is a live vaccine and there you have a risk that the bacteria will escape and start dividing and causing problems. So traditionally people have used something called attenuated live vaccines which is where they damage the uh, vaccine organism, for example a bacterium, to make it sick so it can only grow very slowly or in a very limited way. For the mycoplasma, there are the so-called kill switches, safety elements that will prevent the synthetic mycoplasma vaccine from growth or mutation and becoming a disease again. What we can do now that is different is rather than generally just damaging bacteria, we can rationally design them using these new biological engineering tools that we have in, in my field of synthetic biology. And we can make the bacteria grow slowly when we want them to grow slowly. We can even make them die when we want them to die. We can build in so-called kill switches uh, so we have far more control. The live vaccine will have genetically engineered layers of safety implemented to prevent its growth within its host animal. The first layer of safety is a chemical kill switch that can be triggered by adding a dedicated substance. What we want to do is to be able to control it in case something goes wrong. We can even add chemicals to further kill the bacteria tripping another kind of genetic switch so that the bacteria essentially commit suicide as soon as we add this extra chemical. Live vaccines are living organisms that could mutate and evolve. If natural mutation occurs, the vaccine will instantly die. If a mutation comes along to kill part of the system, instead of the bacterium being able to evolve resistance to the artificial network we've put in, the bacteria will just die. They will not develop resistance. Having a chassis organism that is completely understood, having the tools to precisely edit its genome as well as having a number of safety mechanisms on board will enable scientists to create highly effective, specific and safe life vaccines. Therefore leaping forward to a new era of industrial agriculture that could be free of antibiotics and its negative side effects.